Hey, everybody. How you doing, Shannon? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. Very good. Good. So here we are today for Creating Light in Photoshop with Shannon Squires. Well, and uh, having me. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be great. Great session. And uh, did you want to uh, summarize what we'll be going over today? Yeah. yeah. So um, I think one of the big things a lot of people ask me about with my art is how I do my lighting. And it's pretty much a combo of getting everything right in camera, but also bringing it into Photoshop and creating light um, in there. So I'm going to go over that. We're going to do pretty much a full edit. So I will be doing some skin retouching and different things just to kind of prep the image before I bring in um, some of the things that I do to add light to my image. So the image I shot is actually created um, and you'll see it too so i did lighting on one side but i purposely left off light on the other side of my subject in order to be able to teach how to bring um, light in and match that lighting on the other side excellent excellent so yes before we begin welcome everybody let us know where you're watching from it's a big group of people already nice yeah that's good so don't be shy, everyone. Do you let us know where you're watching from? That's jumping. The numbers are jumping good. Good. Here Love we it. Go. So we've got uh, Pauline from South Africa. My friend AJ from Brooklyn, New York. TJ from Idaho. Michael from Colorado. Wow, it's really coming in. Vermont. Ted from Utah. Uh, Kathy from Illinois. It's hard to keep up with these. <laughs> hey, hey, it's Daphne Blount from Bossier City. And we got uh, Lisa from Tampa, Florida. Uh, David from Frisco, Texas. Romania. Nice. Oh, okay. Nice. I spent some time in Romania. Bossier City, Louisiana. Leah from Charlotte. Dawn from Texas. Pensacola, Florida. Ron, thanks for being here. Linda from Houston, Texas. Polly from Seattle. Cheryl from Dallas. Great. Someone says, let's do it. So <laughs> let me just remind those who are watching on Facebook, please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pic so I'll be able to credit you when you comment or ask questions. You should see that run underneath the live. Just scroll down a little bit until you see a link for StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Give that a click, give permissions, jump on back. And we got uh, Diane from Texas, friend Tiger here. Where is it? Good afternoon, everyone. Tiger, good to see you here. Oh, we did that once. T uh, Trina from Massachusetts. Yep. Doug and Laura from Colorado Springs. Hi, right, so uh, Shannon, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. So I'm Shannon Squires. I am a portrait photographer here in Colorado Springs. So thanks to all my Colorado people that are joining today. It's good to see a whole bunch of faces and names that I recognize. Um, so I originally started my photography career um, in with, in, with um, film photography. And this was so that's, that dates me just a little bit. <laughs> so I started in high school on film photography. It did lots of black and white. And that actually earned me a scholarship to go to the Art Institute of Seattle, um, where I got an associate's degree in a, a commercial photography. Um, when I got done in art school, I was pretty much drained of all of my creativity just because of all the projects I had in art school. And so I took a break for about six years and I was a makeup artist, among mm -hmm. other things. I fought fires in Nevada for a little bit. <laughs> um, and then after a trip to Romania, I was kind of my love for photography was re-sparked um, and I started to pick up my camera again. So in 2010 is when I started my business and I kind of hit the ground running from there. Now keep in mind when I started um, my time in art school, I started in film, like I said, and then the second year of school was all digital photography. Um, that time away where I took six years to um, do other things, the industry changed so much. Everything from the business to the digital side had changed greatly. Um, and so by the time I got back into photography, I basically had to reteach myself everything from scratch, including Photoshop. So I made a lot of mistakes. I was a natural light photographer for 
most of the time until I started um, competing in the PPA competitions and eventually um, really dove into my lighting and getting things a little bit more put together in in my studio here. We have, we have a studio now here in Colorado Springs. Um, so I guess through that, I finally got a grasp on Photoshop. I've been teaching Photoshop for, I don't know, gosh, like six or six to eight years or so, I would say at this point. And now I travel around through all the different PPA organizations teaching Photoshop. Um, so I teach my fine art portraiture and also a little bit of compositing as well. Fantastic. And uh, before we jump right in, I have to ask, how long were you a firefighter for? So in, in Nevada, we actually have kind of a, we have a fire season. Um, and so a lot of kids will go off to college and then during the summers, they'll actually come back and they'll do wildland firefighting um, just to kind of help out, get some money before they go back to college. So I really only did it for one summer because oddly enough, when I got done fighting fires, um, being a makeup artist paid more. <laughs> Sure. Great so, experience though, right? Great it was experience. a great experience. It was one of those things where I wanted to um, see that I could do it and challenge myself. Uh, so it was a good time. Excellent. Good Excellent. memories. Excellent. So uh, did you want to uh, share your screen, jump into Photoshop? No. Let's do it. Let's jump. Let's dive right in. Okay. Great. Here we are. Looks great. Cool. We all set? We're all set. All right. So um, this is kind of the image that I was talking about. Um, this was all done with constant lights. And this is um, a backdrop that I got from Baby Dream Backdrops. And I wanted to kind of do an Enola Holmes type theme. Um, and so I cut out some familiar names who were in my class at Texas school. So you guys will recognize this. And so they got to actually witness me um, photographing this model that we used. The whole setup was done, like I said, with constant lights. So we used NAN lights. Uh, so we had our main light to at a 45 degree camera, right? Um, and then you can see a little bit of that warm orange glow. And what I was trying to do is I wanted to match um, the light on her hair to that warm light that you see in the background. Um, and so what we used is we used Pavo tubes from Nan Light, and those you can change the colors of them to give that color cast that you want. You can do it either by changing the color temperature, or you can actually go in and adjust and make it an actual color. So one thing I wanted to demonstrate to my students was not only getting the light situated correctly um, straight in camera, but I purposely left off a little bit of light to the camera left so that I could teach them how to create a very similar glow that you see on the, on the right hand side. Um, but we're gonna contrast that with a, with a blue tone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna change this window light to be a little bit more um, of a cool tone. And essentially what I was thinking is there's this um, cool moonlight blue kind of shade coming in through the windows. And then she has kind of like a, um, uh, like a candlelight warm glow over here. <clears throat> so we're going to dive into this, but first we need to go in and just um, adjust her skin tone and kind of perfect the image before we start to bring in um, the different glows. So what I'm going to uh, Shannon, yeah. can I make a, a just quick suggestion so we might yes, be able to please. see the image larger? If you go straight up above where it says history and actions, and then there's like a double arrow, if you click huh? that, yeah. Click that. I think that'll collapse. Exactly. So now it's a little bit more directed on the image. All right. Got it. Just okay. Beautiful. Beautiful Perfect. image. Good. All set? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going, we're going to start by doing Command J to duplicate that layer. All right. And so we're going to um, keep that background layer um, unobstructed so we can kind of go back and I can show you how far we kind of went with the image. And so on this duplicate layer, what we're going to do is I want to kind of um, make sure that we're bringing some of those details out of the darker parts of the image um, and make sure we're maintaining those highlights as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to filter and then we're going to do a camera raw filter adjustment on that. I do this on a lot of my images because I feel like it really helps to lend itself to, um, what are we doing here? Yeah, just get started. It's just okay. a flash. Oh, okay. Um, so anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and I want to basically kind of soften up the image. And what this does is it kind of helps to lend itself to that fine art look. Um, and so what I like to do is I'll come in here and I'll bring down my highlights just a little bit. So we're kind of flattening out the image just a touch, but because we lit it correctly, we're not going to lose the definition um, and shaping of, of the shadows. So 
I am very much an intuition photographer. And so every image that I do, I don't necessarily pay too much attention to these numbers. These numbers are always going to change depending on what image it is you, that you're looking at. So worry less about the numbers and more so about learning the tools um, and how to recognize what you're looking for in your images. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of bringing down those shadows and I'm going to bring up the shadows. So we're at about plus 56, if you can see, and then negative 14 on highlights currently. And then I'm also going to bring up my blacks as well. So again, we're just looking for those nice details in the shadows and then also in the highlights. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring that up quite a bit. Um, and that looks pretty good to me. I like the color of it. Um, so everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press OK on my camera raw filter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off this, this eyeball icon over here as well, just so we can kind of see where that led us and how far it came already. Nice. OK, good. So now that we have a really good foundation with our exposure, we can see all of our great details and everything. We're going to zoom into our model and we're going to start to adjust her skin. She is a fantastic model and she takes really good care of her skin. So I don't have to do too much to it. So a lot of times if they do have problematic skin, that's when I would go in and I would do a frequency separation. And I actually do two different forms of frequency separation. The one being more of a traditional frequency separation where you kind of had the, the two split layers where you're working in both your tones and your textures. Um, we don't really, she really doesn't have enough problematic skin that we have to worry too much about it. So I'm just gonna be, come in here with my spot healing tool. And I'm just gonna touch up kind of those areas where they, they just kind of stand out a little bit more. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use my, what I describe as a brush on frequency separation where I go in and it kind of smooths the whole skin um, working on one layer. And so I don't necessarily just use one or the other. Most of the time I will just use um, the brush on frequency separation. But if they do have, like I said, problematic skin, that's when I'll go in and I'll use um, the more of the traditional frequency separation. Great. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. So now what I'm gonna do is, this is where I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna create that brush on frequency separation. So what I'm gonna do to create that is I'm gonna do um, a Command J. So we're duplicating that layer. And then I'm gonna change the blending mode on that new layer. And we're gonna change that to vivid light. And from there, we're gonna invert that. So Command I to invert it. And then we're gonna do a filter, other, high pass, all right. So what we're looking for here, and the way I kind of describe this is we're looking for kind of a, mel a melting of the tones of the skin. So what I'm looking for, I'm going to bring this down here, is about something like that. So basically, you can't really tell where um, the highlight starts or stops and it kind of transitions into this darker shadow. So it, I think melting is probably the right way to describe it. So it would look something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK there. And so again, it depends on your, how far away or close your subject is within the frame. And so these, these numbers are going to change with every image that you're working on. So just know that. So then we're going to do a filter, blur. We're going to do a Gaussian blur. All right. And so what we're looking for here is we're going to adjust our radius until we see kind of like that, that skin is smoothing out. Um, but we're still maintaining the texture of the skin. So pores are okay. People have pores. So you want to make sure that they still have like a lot of that skin texture. Um, when I'm working with somebody with maybe more mature skin or even male skin, I, I do this particular step a little bit less um, just so that they don't look overdone. So this looks pretty good for me for her skin. Now, keep in mind, one thing I want to kind of note before we go ahead and press OK here is when you're doing this step, what we're looking for is we're just kind of focusing on the larger surfaces of skin. So right around here on her cheek. Um, but one thing you want to be careful about is, is you can see that there's some haloing happening here, like right on the side of her face and maybe even a little bit around her eyebrows. So when we go, when we go to brush this on her skin, we have to take note of where those halos are forming so that we don't bring those back in. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. From there, I'm going to come down here to the bottom of our layers panel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press this um, this masking box here. And it's gonna give us this, this masking box on this layer. And I'm going to invert that, okay? So now all we have to do is come over here to our brush and we're gonna get a, a nice heavy 
a soft round brush. And keep in mind too, we created this particular, particular adjustment just specifically for her skin. So it really doesn't matter how heavy we brush this on. I usually hover around um, in the 80s or so when I'm brushing it on, just just because it's um, it, it goes on pretty quick, but it's not at 100%. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just using my white brush, and we're just focusing again on those large areas of skin, and we're going to avoid any of the edges. So right around the lip, we're going to avoid um, the edges of the eyebrows that we saw, um, and also the edge of the face where that halo was kind of popping up. I'm just going to go around and smooth all of those areas. And at first, it's kind of hard to see, but back up here. And then I'll also use, I don't just use this on the face. I'll actually use this on um, all over the body. Um, again, just kind of avoiding those hard lines. So like the edges of the face, the lips. Um, I don't brush it on the fingers or anything like that, but I will do like the large surfaces of skin around um, the hands, uh, legs. This actually works fantastic for if you have newborns and they have like all the, sp the spider veins or anything like that. This is fantastic. Uh, it's a fantastic step for that. And pairing it with um, the traditional frequency separation, it's magical. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the skin, I'm going to go ahead and gonna click this off and on so you can see the difference. Okay. So like I said, she has really great skin, but it just kind of takes it to that next level. Um, when I am doing this, I will also use this on children's skin. I think it lends itself to, again, that fine art look that you see in my work. Um, and so uh, I do this on pretty much everybody. So I am going to go ahead and merge that down. Um, I am a merger, <laughs> except when I'm doing my compositing. I know that is going to make so many people cringe, um, but it's, it, it, you know, sorry, not sorry. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to merge that down. Um, and then kind of before we move forward, I just want to come in here and brighten up different areas. So one way I like to brighten up her eyes, so she's getting nice, dark dark eyes. Um, and so one way I like to come in and, and just add a little bit of a little oomph to my subject's eyes is I'm going to do a new layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on those, um, the shape lights in the eyes. So we have the catch lights. The catch lights are these little sparkles that sit on top of that clear part of the surface of your eye. The shape light is the light that kind of, it's the same light, it just kind of comes in and it pools inside of the iris of the eyes. And so if you picture it, like if you have a, a window to a house and on the outside, there's the reflection on the glass of the window, and then the light that falls on the floor inside of the house, that would be your shape light. So to enhance that, I'm going to go ahead and come in here with a soft round brush. When I do this, I usually like to bring my opacity to around the 20% range. And I'm going to bring down my flow as well. And I think we're going to hover in the 20% range as well. So we landed on 25% opacity and 21% flow. And what I'm going to do is your shape lights are always going to be opposite of your catch lights. So we're going to come at a diagonal here. And we're just going to draw kind of a crescent shape, again, on that opposite side of your catch lights. All right. And so this is just a plain, regular white brush on a blank layer. So then what we're going to do is to enhance that is we're going to come over here to the blending modes. So for each layer that we're working with, or your, the anatomy of a layer here, you have your layer, you're always going to have your blending modes, and then you also have your opacity adjustment. So here's your layer. I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. And what that does, it just, I'm going to click that off and on so you can kind of see. It enhances the light that's, or the color that's already in her eyes. So we're not adding color. We're not taking a guess of what color her eyes should be or just, just popping in some random color. It is literally enhancing the color that is in her eyes already. So it, it looks, um, it looks natural. If for whatever. And Shannon. Yeah. Can I, can I just answer a qu qu question? Please. Someone keeps, uh, different people are asking the same questions. So, yeah. Um, Someone uh, says, can we access this tutorial later? So just to <laughs> clarify, as always, I always post the link to the recordings at the top of the groups, and it will be linked to the YouTube recording as well. Um, proceed. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. That's, okay. I, that's nice that you offer that so that they can go and refer back to it. So I know this is a lot of information and steps, so it's that's great. 
Um, okay, so if for whatever reason you brush it on and you want a little more oomph to the eyes, um, do something a little bit more dramatic, all you have to do is just duplicate that layer. So you can do a Command J, and then it starts to build up, um, and so it's a little bit more, have a little, has a little bit more of a pop to it, a little bit more intense. And then, of course, if for whatever reason you feel like they're looking a little bit like a vampire, <laughs> you just come over here to your opacity and bring down um, that slider just a touch. And then you can kind of find a happy medium between those two layers. Okay. Great. Okay. So we're off to a really good start. Um, I know that there's a soft box in the top left corner, but I don't really want to waste my time getting rid of that at the moment. I really want to make sure that we get to the meat of what you guys are here for, which is adding light into our images. So, um, so we have those enhancements on her eyes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, going to go ahead and I'm going to shift um, and I'm going to highlight those layers. And again, sorry, I'm a merger. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and reverse those down. Um, okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start to bring in and, and kind of adjust um, the light that we're looking for. So like I said, my vision when I started this was to have this warm glow to the camera right, and it's it's like candlelight, so we're going to have that, that warmth on her skin and that side of her, her hair. Um, and what I wanted was for this particular area to be like that moon, moonlight, and so it's going to be kind of a bluish tone. There's a reoccurring theme throughout all of my work, and I really love the contrast of both warm and cool. And so you will see that happening um, all throughout my images. And so what I want to do is I want to come up here and I want to adjust this window so it does have a little bit more of that blue light that I'm um, that I'm hoping for. And we can do that a couple of different ways. Um, one way I like to do that is we can duplicate this layer and we can actually do a color effect. Um, on the whole, on that whole duplicate layer. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna push Command J. And what I'm gonna do is right down here at the bottom of our layer panel is this FX button. And so let me do this here. There we go, FX. And that's a fancy trick that Andrew showed me. <laughs> so hopefully it lasts for him. <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, okay, so we have that um, FX button here. So if you press that, you have a whole bunch of options and I'm gonna, going to do a color overlay on that. And once you push color overlay, you're gonna see this panel pop up. Um, and what I wanna do is I want to come into this color panel that's here and I'm gonna pick kind of a soft, like bluish tone and you can kind of see the image in the background, you know, shifting color and changing a little bit as we pick which shade we want to work with. Nice. Okay, something nice and cool, but we don't want it to be too hazy there. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to press OK. Um, and then you can also change the blending mode of that effects. So you can come in here and, and play with overlay. Um, overlay seems like it's kind of glowing the way I would like it to. So we might go with overlay. Um, and then, of course, if you wanted to, to darken it up, a lot of times I will use multiply. Um, but in this case, I think that overlay blending mode is going to give us more of what we want. And so that now that we shifted it to overlay, I'm going to make sure that I still like that color. And I like it about, about right there. So I landed on hex number 41999, uh, lowercase f. And I'm going to press OK. And then you can also change the opacity of that particular adjustment before you press OK and bring it into your image. And so I'm going to press, um, I think I'm going to stop at about, that's 58%, and I'm going to press OK. So you can see that we have this layer here. And then right under here, you can see those effects that are attached to it. If you wanted to add a masking box to those effects, you can either just add a whole, whole masking box to that whole layer, or if you hover over these effects and you press right click, create layer, what it does is it gives you a clipped layer to that layer, the duplicate layer. Um, and then this is that color that we picked. Okay. And you can see it's on overlay. And all you have to do is do a masking box on that and command I to invert it. And so from there, what I'm going to do is, so we have our masking box. I can actually come in here and I can just use a white brush and I can paint that on um, exactly where I want it. I think in order to get it to be this nice, pretty transition, I'm going to start with an over, or excuse me, a gradient. So we have our gradient tool right here. And up at the top, you have a couple of different options. So we have where it's transitioning from left to right or right to left. And then we have our radial gradient, a, color, a couple of different other options. But I'm going to focus on this radial gradient. Okay. 
And we want to make sure that we're transitioning from black to white or white to black. So you have a couple of different op options in your basics panel, and you just want to make sure you're, you're transitioning from, like I said, white to black, black to white, either way. Um, it is at 100% opacity right now. So if I come in here and I draw um, a diagonal line towards my subject, it's basically going to give us this orb of that blue light. So this is the opposite of what I want it to do. So all we have to do is push command I to invert that. And you can see how it puts that, that light, that blue light up there. Um, and then if we wanted to, we just come in here with a soft white brush and I can start to brush that bluish light in areas that I want it to be. Now, when you're doing this too, you kind of have to think about instead of just <laughs> drawing a big blue orb in the background of your image, you actually have to think about where that cool light is going to hit. So it's not going to wrap around the corner and hit these images over here. Those are going, going to still be warm um, because of the, this light from our candlelight. Um, so you just have to think about where you're putting that. I think I like where that's at now, and I think that that's okay. Um, I might bring down the opacity just a touch because I want it to just be kind of a hint of blue. And that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to merge those layers together, just this one with the with the effects on it. So Command E to merge. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to go in here and start to create that blue light on the opposite side of our subject. Now to do that, we could actually go in there and we can start to use our Wacom tablets and our pens and we can get in there with a really small pen um, and, and really etch in those details. Or we can do some tools that are going to help to make our lives <laughs> a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I want to do a quick select and I'm going to cut out our subject so that when we go in and we start to paint on the blue light, we don't have to worry about it getting onto um, our subject, or excuse me, on the, uh, onto the background. And we want it to stay just on our subject. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna grab my quick select tool. So if you're not seeing your quick select tool or really any of these tools in general on the side panels, all you have to do is come down here to these three dots and right click and up at the top, you can say edit toolbar and you can go over here and find whichever tools you happen to be missing. If they're um, grayed out, that means they're not represented in your panel. And so if you wanted to like get rid of something or bring it back in, that's all you have to do. Okay. So here is my quick select tool. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to up at the top when you are selected on your quick select tool, you just are going to hit select subject. And Photoshop does a pretty great job of picking out our subject. There might be a couple of things that we have to go in and, and adjust and make sure that we have um, everything we need there. Um, sometimes when you have like a darker background or an image like this where um, we, we might have to make sure we have the rest of her elbow or all the pieces of her hair. Um, but you can see it, it did a pretty good job of, of doing all the things that we need. So I think we are all set. Now that we have that selection of our subject, all we need to do is just go ahead and push Command J on that selection. And you can see that Photoshop gave us a brand new layer with just that selection. So now we have her completely um, isolated from the background and we can go in and do um, the work that we need to do. All right, so now we have her, she's on basically a PNG layer. So we have that checker box behind her, which represents the transparency. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna do a new layer and this is where we get to start to really manipulate and bring in, in that light and that glow that we want behind her. So we have that layer. What we need to do is we're going to pick a kind of a bluish shade. And I'm going to show you kind of the power of a clipping mask. So we're going to pick a nice pretty blue shade. Um, and I'm going to grab my soft round brush. And if I go in here and I start to brush on some of this light and color onto our subject, currently what's happening is it's it's brushing all over the whole image and the reason that it's doing that is because this layer is not clipped to our subject so when we come in here and we're on this layer and i do a right click and i say uh create clipping mask basically you see this arrow pop up and it's pointed to the layer below it what that's saying is that blue that we just brushed is only speaking to the layer below it and not a universal adjustment on the whole image. Okay. So let's back up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that. And we're going to go ahead and do a new layer once again. And this time we're going to start with our right click 
and we're going to say create clipping mask. So it's only speaking to that part of our subject. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And this is where I get to start to come in here and manipulate that light. So I'm, I have a sm soft round brush at 25% flow, or excuse me, 25% opacity and 21% flow. And I'm just going to come in here and start to brush on that light. Now, one of the, the biggest mistakes I think I see people make when they're brushing on light like this is they, they come in and they just um, do like kind of a cookie cutter move and they just go around the perimeter of the edge of that subject. The problem with that is our subject isn't a, a flat element, right? I mean, she is in Photoshop currently, but in reality, she has, um, you know, depth to her different uh, curves in her hair and and that light is going to interact with those different pieces of hair um, depending on what its angle of view and how you, it would be representing itself um, to your light. So we, you have to think about that when you're brushing this on. So I have there's a little piece here that kind of wraps around and then the light is going to be um, a little bit more intense as it's at that edge kind of like a like a, a rim light. Okay, and then I can come down here too, and I can start to brush that on her wardrobe and her shoulder. And so if you're brushing it on with a soft brown brush, you have a little bit more control over how much you're applying, and it's not such intense um, adjustments. You can actually just go in and, and slowly build up to what it is that you're trying to do. So you have to give yourself just a little bit of patience. So I'll come in here and do just a little bit around the edge. What's nice about this too is it also goes in and helps you to um, create separation from your subject, your subject from the background. All right. And then we'll come down here and we'll do just a little bit because there's going to be just a little bit of fall off as it starts to come down here but I still wanna make sure I have a little bit of that um, separation too. Okay. So I will say too, I, I'm, I'm using my Wacom tablet, um, which really helps me a lot when I'm doing this type of art. Um, because my pen is pressure sensitive, it allows me to kind of use my artist hand and my strokes and um, to kind of, you can kind of see where the light gets um, a little bit heavier and then it softens out as my pen kind of lifts off of my tablet. Um, so if you aren't using a Wacom tablet, I highly recommend it, especially for art like this. Cause I was going to say that I really like that painterly quality of that work. It's like when you paint, you build up. So you have like areas that are brighter and then other areas that are kind of more subdued. Mm -hmm. Nice feel. Yeah. Well, and, and if you think about it, it makes sense because that is, that is how the light is interacting with the subject. And so is it kind of, um, falls off, it's going to dissipate. And so having that feature when you're working with it, as opposed to just a mouse where you just kind of get that blunt edge, um, it's, it's, it's so valuable to have that. <clears throat> Excellent. All right. So now that we have kind of that light there, it's, it's, it looks a little cartoony. <laughs> and so what we're going to do is this is, is kind of the, the power of blending mode. So we get to go in this layer and pick our blending and mode. Shannon. Yes. Can you take a quick question? Sure. Absolutely. So Trina asks, what Wacom do you currently use like? Yeah. So I have two different tablets, Wacom tablet, Wacom tablets. Um, and so, so I have the Intuos Pro, which I'm kind of using today. And I have the large. I, I, and the people usually tease me about having the large tablet. But I'm um, an artist by, I have been a pencil artist um, since I was a kid. Um, and so I like that surface space to kind of work on and kind of get my brush strokes in. And so I actually use the large Intuos Pro. Um, however, at my house, I also have the Cintiq Pro. The difference between the Intu Intuos and the Cintiq is the Cintiq actually has, it mirrors what my computer screen um, is doing. And so a lot of, and even myself, I thought that I would use that actual screen more often than I do. Um, but I don't. <laughs> so I guess for some, that screen is, is maybe a little bit of overkill, um, unless you actually are planning to calibrate your, your tablet and using it um, as one of your secondary screens. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so blending mode. So what I'm going to do is um, to get kind of that glow, we're going to use this 
uh, a couple of different layers on different blending modes. And to get that glow, what I like to do is I usually build up two different layers um, using both soft light and overlay. So in this case, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look at, I'm just going to see what soft light um, uh, or overlay or sometimes even hard light. So in this case, I really do like what hard light's doing here. Um, and so I encourage you to go in and, and really play with your blending modes and see which one uh, looks it is going to work best for you. So you might actually like color dodge. It depends on the image. It depends on what you're working with. But in this case, I think I actually do like hard light. Okay. So there's hard light. Um, what I'm going to do here is I want to bring down that opacity just a little, um, just because it just to make it nice and smooth. And I think that looks pretty good there. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another layer above that. And we also need to clip that to our subject. So right click, create clipping mask. And then we can go in with our same color, except this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make it, uh, I guess, a little bit softer or thinner lines around the edge of the, ha the hair. So we're kind of kind of building up that light. And I'm going to up my opacity on my brush. I'm at 40% now. And I'm just going to kind of start to come in here and really go around the um, edge of the hair. And then when I start to get to some of these areas where um, I'm going to start to end up like drawing hairs, so it looks a little bit more realistic. So when you're looking at um, how light interacts with the hair and the glows and the shine of the hair, you can actually look at this side of our subject. So you can see it gets nice and intense and then it kind of wraps around and there's different strands that are acting differently with the light. Um, and you have that rim light. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on when I'm doing that. So I'm going to follow around the edge of our subject and kind of creating that rim light. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start to draw individual hairs. Okay, so then I'm going to bring down my brush pretty small. And then I'm going to up my opacity. I'm going to go into, eh, I'm going to be at 54%. Then I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to start to use that to brush on those hairs. So again, this is when that, um, that tapering of my brush and the Wacom tablet, that pressure sensitivity, sensitivity is, is working for me so I can do these hairs. Another important thing to, to, to have on when you're doing that as well is this little um, bullseye right up here. It looks like there's a pen with a bullseye around it. That's called shape dynamics. And so what we're doing is that's what helps to have your brush start to um, taper off as you um, create pressure and, and lift off your pen off of your tablet, great. which is great for creating these hairs. So then we can come in here and we can change that blending mode. And in this case, I think I also still like it in hard light, but I'm going to bring down my opacity on that as well. out and see how we're doing. That looks good. <clears throat> okay, so now what I want to do, so now that we also have our subject and we have, we're bringing in that light and all the different things, one thing I want to do too is also create um, a little bit more of that haze behind her kind of coming in through the window light. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is we have our layer with our subject and we have all of that color that we added to her hair. So I'm going to go down one layer and it, um, I'm going to do a new blank layer. So we have a new blank layer under our subject, but above that whole background adjustment that we did prior. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab um, our radial gradient once again. But in this case, what I'm going to do is we have that soft blue color selected. And so I'm going to come right here in the middle. So you're going to see that soft blue color that we, we picked originally. Um, and it's transitioning into the checker box, which again represents a transparency. So if we click that one, you can see it represented up here and still at 100% on a blank layer. Um, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to drag from that window light 
and I'm just going to create a soft uh, kind of glow behind her. So, and then I'm going to do a command or control T and I'm going to um, press shift so I can kind of smooch that around and, and warp it a little bit and tuck that in just a touch. And so that we have kind of a nice hazy glow coming in from the window. Obviously that's a little bit intense and just a little bit too much. So we can come over here and we can bring down our opacity. And then we can also change the blending mode once again, just to kind of get us um, once again, pointed in that right direction. Sometimes I'll build up these layers too. Like I'll leave one in um, normal and I'll do maybe one in um, a different color or a, a different blending mode. So in this case, I have this one in overlay, but I might duplicate that. So command J and let's just uh, see, see what it looks like. So we'll do one in overlay and then we'll do another one in normal. And so <laughs> a lot of my style when I am editing is, is, I know the tools really well. And so that's what I encourage people to, to grasp is, is not really focusing on the steps that I'm creating and, and using them in, in kind of like this mechanical fashion of this is the first step, this is the second step, but really getting to know the, the step, the uh, tools in Photoshop so that you know how to go in and problem solve yourself um, on your individual images. So just a light haze. And I might even bring down that opacity on the overlay layer just a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and do just one more um, layer to come in here and really shape this light that's falling on her shoulder. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to um, go to our subject. Here's our clipped layers above her. I'm going to do a new layer and we have to go in and, um, create a clipping mask. Okay. We're going to do a night, another soft round brush, make that bigger. I'm going to bring down the opacity into the low twenties and I'm bringing down my flow as well. And that's where I'm going to start to, yeah, I might bring it down even more. And if you use a bigger brush, it's going to be a, just a little bit softer as you're kind of shaping that light around her. Um, the smaller the brush you're using, the more you're going to start to see those work lines hmm. look a little bit blotchy. So in, in si situations like this, I will opt for a slightly bigger brush. And then I'm going to bring down my opacity quite a bit. All right. And then on this layer, so I, I like what this is doing to her hair, but I'm feeling like it's maybe just a little bit intense on her, um, on her sleeve. So on this layer where we did that first initial light, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here to this layer and I'm going to add a masking box to that. And then I'm just going to grab a black brush. So remember it, a black brush is always going to take away and a white brush is always going to add when we're talking about um, masking boxes. So I'm just having a real low opacity. So 70% opacity or excuse me, 17% opacity and 9% flow. And I'm just going to come in here and start to brush that light off just slightly on her shoulder and soften that out. And that looks just a little bit more realistic. Okay. Um, and that looks uh, pretty good to me. So one other thing when I'm creating light like this is, is I like to go in and I will paint my images to um, some degree uh, just to kind of have it be that fine art painterly look. Uh, but also what it does is it helps to blend in those edges of the color that I created and just really smooth everything out. So one way I like to do that is I like to go in here and I'll do it, um, a stamp visible. So stamp visible is, is basically what it says. You're doing a stamp of all of the visible layers. So we're going to do a shift option, command E all at the same time. And so if I were to come in here and click up all of these layers, we have everything that we just did on this one stamp visible layer. Okay. 
So now I'm just treating it as if it was just a completely flat layer. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, I'm going to paint a little bit. I'm going to grab my mixer brush. Okay. So a mixer brush is, is it's a mixer brush. <laughs> And so it, it acts differently than a regular brush. So a mixer brush, um, if you think about it, if you have just kind of a, a white canvas, um, just a tangible canvas, and you put a dollop of blue paint, um, and then you put a little dollop of red paint next to the blue paint, and you start with your finger on the dry canvas, and you start to drag and you drag it through the blue paint and then through the red paint, um, and then you just let that paint kind of uh, uh, brush off of your finger. That's essentially what the mixer brush is doing. We're not actually adding any color to this. Um, what we're doing is we are um, just mixing those colors that are already in our image. So there are a ton of mixer brushes out there. Um, my favorite brushes are from my friend um, Richard Sturdivant. He has great brushes and this is these are the ones I use. Um, so this is the hairbrush, the B3 hairbrush. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use the mixer brush. So this is the hairbrush. Um, and so when I'm doing this, here are your settings for your brush. I like to have the wet um, in the 80s, I would say. Um, and then I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to follow the flow of the hair. And you can see it's starting to mix those colors together. And I'm just dragging those colors through them. So that helps to soften those edges of everything. Um, and like I said, when I'm doing this, I think the important thing is to remember that you are following the shapes of the hairs. We're not trying to brush any details, highlights, shadows away. We are just enhancing them in a kind of like a painterly fashion. Hmm. Nice. It's good stuff. And it's really relaxing. It's like, it's like Photoshop therapy. <laughs> I could paint the best, all the best kind. It is. It really is. <laughs> so I would actually go around my whole subject's head and do this. I know we don't have um, a ton of time, but I would just go around and do all of this. And then by the time I get to um, the end, I like to bring down my opacity just a touch because while I like that painterly style, I don't necessarily want my image to look painted. I just want it to have a kind of a painterly fine art look to it. Um, and so what I'll do is in, in, to keep it a little bit more photorealistic is I will bring down the opacity on that layer so that you can still see the texture, you can still see the detail. Um, but again, everything kind of has like this painted kind of look to it. So this is kind of a, a rough overpainting here. Um, so I get about to that point and then that's where I kind of bring down the opacity of my brush or of that layer. So I'm going to click that off and on, and you can see that it just really smoothed out that textured look of her hair without making it look too painted. Nice. So I would come back down here. And then um, I think the last thing that I would do, I'm going to kind of merge that down, that painted. Um, you can paint the, the, the clothing as well. Um, when I am painting, I will say this. Um, when I am painting, I like to treat it in sections. And so I'll, I'll, I'll paint her hair first. And then I actually like to go in, I'll do a new layer and I'll uh, paint her clothes separately. Um, for the clothes, I usually use a spatter 59 brush. Um, looks like this. And then I will go around. And again, I'm not trying to paint away any highlights or shadows. Oh, you have to make sure it's a mixer brush. All right. And I'm not trying to, um, like I said, paint away any highlights or shadows. I'm just really just following um, the light when I'm doing this and those edges. And I'll paint all the clothes. And then I'll do the same thing where I go in and I will bring down the opacity. So pretend I painted the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just bring down the opacity. So this it it, it does get a little bit tricky when you are painted um, something with a pattern on it, so like a paisley um, type of pattern. Um, but if you can go in there and be patient and go through the whole texture, you can do it that way. Um, it just kind of depends on what your ultimate goal is for the overall look of your image. The final thing I would do is I would merge down those painted layers. And then what I would do is I would come in here and I would do a dodge and burn. So there's many, many ways that you can do dodge and burn. 
Um, you can duplicate the layer twice and change one to screen, one to overlay. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do, or excuse me, one to screen, one to multiply, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm actually going to use the history brush in this case. So I'm going to push Command J. And then in our history panel, I'm going to click where we created, uh, we duplicated that layer. So right there. And so that um, history panel is clicked. So I'm going to go ahead and close that so you can see better. Um, and then with the history brush, you can change the blending mode to screen or multiply very much like you would if you were to create those two layers. And so I usually start with screen mode first and I will use that history brush. And I usually like to bring down my opacity of that brush into the low twenties. And I'm gonna bring down the flow into the, like the teens, the low teens. And what I like to do is I almost always start underneath the brow bone. I'm not sure if that goes back to my makeup days, <laughs> but I love to highlight the brows. And so when I'm doing dodge and burn, I will start with my highlights right underneath the brow bone first. Okay. And so when we're doing dodge and burn and we're contouring somebody's face, you do have to be a little bit careful because you can change the structure of somebody's face pretty quickly. Um, and so just take note of where those highlights and shadows are and just be careful about how you're reshaping people. Because that is essentially why we do contour and makeup is to make us look noses thinner, cheeks more defined, stuff like that. Um, I, I was going to say that your experience, uh, Doing makeup probably really helps understand how light affects and how you can make, you know, by adding dark to, mm -hmm. to build some type of density and then light will lighten an area. So. Yeah, it's true. I, you know, when I was, was a makeup artist, I guess I didn't really think too much about it and how it related to photography. But the more I do Photoshop and, and um, different things, like I, I see myself applying makeup in people's, um, on people mm -hmm. in, in Photoshop and shaping their faces and paying attention to how to emphasize the lips or um, restructure the brows to make them look um, a little bit more expressive, less expressive. So I would say, yeah, I, I think that ha having been a makeup artist has um, benefited me a lot in my Excellent. photoshopping. <laughs> Great. So cheekbones, I usually go down the nose, the cupid's bow. This is the cupid's bow right up here on the top of the lip, the fatty part of the lip. And then I do, I'll do the chin. Um, and then I will do all the different highlights of the clothes and everything when I do this. And I'll just enhance those different areas that I, I want to stand out. This is also a really good way to come in here and enhance the different highlights in the hair. This is how you get that Pantene hair look. <laughs> so you come in here and you just enhance those highlights in the hair. Nice. And then obviously at the opposite of that, we would do um, multiply. And from there, we just kind of darken. Um, you're basically enhancing the highlights and darkening the shadows. And so if you can see the shadows, you, I mean, you can see where they're supposed to go. And if you slowly build it up, then you shouldn't have be able to see your work lines or any, you know, anything too heavy. I think it is easy to get carried away with the dodge and burn which I think is a style in, an, in and of itself, but I like to keep my stuff looking pretty natural. And one quick little tip I will say in, in regards to people's eyebrows. <laughs> so when I have um, uh, somebody who has, she has, she's got great eyebrows, but when I have somebody who has really sparse eyebrows, what I like to do is I'll come in here and in my dodge and burn tools, I will grab a hard round brush um, I'm on multiply, but I'm going to up my opacity and I'm going to up my flow to 100%. And I'm going to bring my brush down to one or two pixels. So in this case, it's one pixel. Um, and I will actually come in here. Let me go right here. Okay, so I'm on her, her brow. So right here. Oops. Not now. Okay, and I will actually start to come in here and that is darker than I want it to be. So come on, see. Okay. And then <clears throat> I will come in here and I will actually use um, a multiply brush to come in here and add new eyebrows to somebody who maybe has sparse eyebrows or we need to fill it in. So that's a fun little trick. If you have somebody, sometimes kids, adults, they just have these little sparse areas, usually at the front of their brows. 
And so I'll just come in, in there and reshape them a little bit. This also works really good if you wanted to come in here and do new lashes. Um, now keep in mind too, when you're doing multiply, it's not like I'm drawing a specific color. It's basin, basically taking a darkened version of the overall image. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm not applying a br dark brown color. I'm just taking the color that's already there and emphasizing different hairs um, with the multiply. Okay. So I guess real quick, I will show you where I kind of applied this exact same technique um, to some of my other images. Um, in this case, this was a senior portrait. <laughs> and so I, same thing that you saw me do today, that's exactly what I was doing to um, enhance the light and enhance the color around uh, this guy, um, definition on his muscles, and then obviously kind of over here where I put the blue light on, on the shield and his armor. Um, and then of course, so, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, so this is what they want for their senior portraits nowadays. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I will say that, um, so this guy, he, he promised his mom that he would do the, the nice senior portraits if he could have something epic and cool. And so that's what we did. He, he plays okay. Warhammer. And so, um, Warhammer is essentially the European version of Dungeons and Dragons. And so we created this specifically for him. Um, and so, yeah, so I got to do his regular senior portraits, but also do something really cool and, and epic. So this is a full composite, obviously. <laughs> and really the only thing that's him is his head. <laughs> and then uh, Rich has a comment. He says, in case I forget, this has been great. So many techniques yeah. I've wanted to learn, especially that dodge and burn method. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. I'm glad you learned a lot. It's a quick crash course, but I'm glad you got some tips from it. <laughs> Um, okay, so I, I guess I show you this one just because not everything I, I do is all sure. kids and fluffy and, and stuff like that. I do, um, you know, monsters and different things too. Oh, this is a different monster. <laughs> um, so this one actually is in my um, Creative Academy, uh, and I do teach this one. Obviously, this was the Halloween version. Uh, this is my four, now four-year-old. She was three at the time, but I love character creation. I love creating glows in Photoshop. Uh, and so I created this for her in a tutorial. So you'll see me create a monster. Um, and I used my slime brushes and we added so much glow. And a lot of those same techniques that you saw today are in this particular tutorial. So, Great. but yeah, like I said, there's our crash course and just Excellent. adding light. Yeah. Great. So did really great work. So uh, did you want to talk about your uh, creative academy? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let me pull that up for us too. So my creative Academy, I created, um, I'll also do a quick show there. If okay. There it is. Nice. I like that uh, range of images that you show there. Quite the variety. It's Thank cool. you. You know, In I fact, think the bottom left is that little monster creature. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find my, yeah. Oh, there we go. Chrome. Here we go. Can we still see my screen or no? Uh, it looks like you're showing the view of us, though. So. Oh, let me go here. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, there great. So, <clears throat> yeah, so I I love to teach, first of all. And so the more I kind of developed my style with my photography um, and creating these epic images, it all started with compositing for my children is, is really how I got into um, creating epic images and, and different things. So um, I created my Creative Academy so that I could teach and I could teach specifically to what I knew people who were following me wanted to learn. And so I have kind of a, a wide range of, of different styles. I had perfected my outdoor portraits usually using na all natural light. And so there's some of those tutorials in there as well, um, showing you how to adjust color in, in outdoor portraits, but also you can kind of see um, all of these images that are around the verbiage here. Those are the tutorials that are in this um, 12 week course or 12 month course. Um, and it's at my membership. And so each month there's a new one released unless you just go ahead and buy into the full membership and you actually get access to all of these. So like I said, there's a mix of all different types of composites, my award-winning fine art portraiture, and then also some outdoor um, portraits as well. Nice, very nice. Thank you. And just to showcase that again a close-up of the different variety i always like that image which one so the it's the one that has all the variety of different images for the creative academy oh the, yeah like if you look at the screen it has the uh, one with the the uh, kid with the dog and the plane going by as well at the, up top oh okay let me see 
Yeah. It's just, I'm sharing the screen. Yeah. So. Oh, you're sharing the screen. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You're in control. You have all the power. <laughs> Only this one moment. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. People really loving it. So, uh, Let's see. Uh, there was David said, thank you. Thank you, David. Someone on Facebook says, learning a lot. Thank you for sharing. Trina says, thank you. I learned many new techniques. Um, and someone asked, what is the shortcut for enlarging or decreasing brush? Which I believe is just the left and right bracket, correct? Yep. Yep. And then uh, TJ says, thank you. I currently use the Creative Academy and I definitely recommend it. Excellent. Oh, thank you. And uh, Michael says the tutorials are fantastic and provide a great range of techniques. Okay. So, yeah. So just a reminder, once again, for the uh, Shannon Squires Creative Academy, you can get that at shannonsquirescreativeacademy.com slash Lightroom underscore Photoshop. And I will also put that link with the recording link in the event pages. And uh, you can also see that link in the description on my YouTube. So yeah, don't forget that's Shannon Squires Creative Academy.com slash Lightroom underscore Photoshop. You can also follow Shannon on Facebook at Facebook.com Shannon Squires Photo. And uh, don't forget you can see the recording of this as well as other live events on my YouTube at youtube.com digital art drew. That's digital art drew on YouTube. And that's where this recording will be with a description and the link to access Shannon's wonderful courses. And we have a bunch of more comments coming in. So let's see. Renee says, so glad I could join in. Thank you. Doug says, oh, I think he was talking about the, uh, the image of the, the, with the dog and the <laughs> plane going by. <laughs> Polly says, thanks so much. Been looking for more tools to create that painterly look. This has been very helpful. Yes. Excellent presentation. Thank you, Shannon. Andrew. Dawn says, thank you for doing this. And uh, Tiger says, thank you for the great boot camp on creating light in Photoshop, Shannon. I'll definitely be coming back a few times to this one. And thank you, Andrew. Yep. Great. Awesome. So yeah, Thanks. it was really, really great, uh, Shannon. Wonderful stuff. Thanks. And uh, so yeah, once again, just a reminder, do check out the Shannon Squires Creative Academy, Photoshop courses for creative photographers. Shannon Squires, creativeacademy.com slash Lightroom underscore Photoshop. Thank you so much, Shannon. And thanks everyone for watching. Thank you. Check thank out you. the recording. Thank you. And it was great. I'll have you back again and again. I'd be happy to do it. Excellent. Thanks everybody. <laughs>